In today's Final Touch, living a life of luxury might not be your every day, but it can be a reality for a night. Complete with a butler to cater to your every whim. To honor the release of Downton Abbey, the movie, High Clare Castle is offering a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity on November 26th. The estate gained international fame and appeared on the series, now going to the big screen. For one night only, two guests will be given the royal treatment and even be allowed to spend the night in a private room in the castle. The state features traditional dinner in the state dining room and private tours of the grounds. The price, under $200. But you'll need more than money to make this reality. The reservation opens on October 1st, and it's first come, first serve. Good luck. That's our time for now. News 3 Now at 5 starts right now. Right now at 5, the Madison Common Council votes on a resolution to bring F-35s to Truax Field. We'll have a live preview of the contentious debate. And a man killed by a hit-and-run driver last week had just started to turn his life around. We'll hear from some of those who knew him best. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 5. Thanks for staying with News 3 Now. A death investigation is underway in Dodge County after a 65-year-old man dies in a squirrel hunting incident this morning. Officials with the Department of Natural Resources say the victim was shot by his 61-year-old brother in Reeseville. The two were out hunting squirrels in Dodge County near Mud Lake Road. The 61-year-old told authorities he saw movement and shot the victim. The name of the victim is not being released at this time. Developing now in the Channel 3000 Alert Center, Columbia County dispatchers say a school bus and a pickup truck collided this afternoon. It happened on Highway 22 and Highway B outside of Rio around 315. Authorities say they were not sure if children were on the bus at the time, but there are no reported injuries and there is also unknown damage to the truck. Authorities have identified the woman killed during a fatal crash involving a bicycle. The Dane County Medical Examiner's Office says 58-year-old Kay Larson of Fitchburg was pronounced dead at the scene. Police say a 17-year-old driver hit Larson as she rode her bike on West Broadway Street near Falcon Circle around 1.30 Sunday morning. The 17-year-old was taken into custody and later released. We are learning more about the man who was hit while crossing a north side Madison Street last week dying from his injuries days later. The driver took off and police still don't know who they are. Our Amanda Quintana is here with more on Daryl Sunderledge. Amanda? Yeah, this story is just becoming more tragic. Daryl had experienced homelessness and finally was able to secure permanent housing when he was hit and killed. The organization Housing Initiatives, Inc. set him up with an affordable apartment on the north side just near where he was hit. He had been living there for a year and a half, becoming part of that community and in a good place in life after briefly living at Porchlight, a shelter for men. Daryl was able to be housed with us securely and stably for one of the first times ever um, in his adult life that we know of. So it was great to have him, to be able to serve him. So, you know, when this happened, the irony of it is that he finally had stable housing, he was in a supportive community, and he had people who were working with him and cared about him. Brad Hinkfuss says there's a lot of shame in this case. None of it has to do with Daryl or his struggles in life. All of it to do with the driver who hit him. He hopes they realize Daryl's life mattered and turned themselves in. The Madison Police Traffic Specialist says they're making good progress in this investigation. They've gotten some good tips, but no suspect has been arrested yet. A very sad story. Hope to get some answers soon. Amanda Quintana reporting. Amanda, thank you. A Madison man is dead after his car crashed into a pole in Monona last night. Dane County Dispatch says the Monona Fire and Police Departments responded to the crash in the 4600 block of Winnequa Road just before 7:30. The 21-year-old driver. Driver was the only person in that vehicle. No other injuries were reported. Monona Assistant Fire Chief Dan Eckloff says high speeds were believed to have been a factor in that crash. The Lafayette County Sheriff's Office says it has identified the person it believes is responsible for a hit and run with a horse and buggy over the weekend. On Sunday, a person crashed into the buggy just before 3 a.m. on State Highway 81 in Darlington. Authorities say they received an anonymous tip that led to the car and the name of the person driving. However, there are no charges at this time, so we are choosing not to name the people involved. The crash remains under investigation. The road near a Lake Delton Walmart is back open after a contractor doing some paving work at a gas line. It happened just before 12.30 this afternoon, according to the Stock County Dispatchers. Outside the Walmart, they're on Commerce Street. Crews with Aligned Energy fixed the leak in less than a half hour. No one was without power. 
Let's get a check on the weather now. Gary Canalti is here in the studio. Gary? Well, skies are sunny. Uh, temperatures are in the upper 70s to low 80s, and the humidity levels are still kind of up there in the uh, 60 degree plus range. Let's start out by taking a look at uh, uh, visible cloud track, and you can see again a little bit of fog this morning, especially closer to Lake Michigan. That lifted, and then skies turned partly sunny for much of the day today. And as we check out Doppler track, no rain across most of Wisconsin. There were a couple of showers and thunderstorms up in the far northern part of the state near Lake Superior. Those have moved to the north. Uh, right now, temperatures range from the upper 60s and lower 70s near Lake Michigan with a lake breeze there to the lower 80s across uh, western Wisconsin, closer to the Mississippi River. And dew point temperatures are in the mid 60s to around 70, so it is pretty humid out there. Look for some areas of fog to form overnight with low temperatures in the lower 60s. Tomorrow will be partly sunny, very warm and humid again with a high of 81. That's your News 3 Now First Alert forecast. All right, thank you, Gary. It was the warmest summer on record again for the Northern Hemisphere. Our meteorologist Dave Caulfield joins us now with where Southern Wisconsin's summer ranks. And Dave, well, I guess, you know, still feeling like summer these days out there. It was hot today. Yeah, summer is not going anywhere anytime soon across Southern Wisconsin. According to NOAA, the five hottest meteorological summers in the Northern Hemisphere have all occurred in the past five years. However, besides this last week's summer, this year in Southern Wisconsin has definitely gone against that hot trend. All around the world, hot temperatures were hard to escape during the summer of 2019. From June through August, global surface temperatures were more than 2 degrees Fahrenheit above the 20th century average. For the globe, uh, it was the second uh, warmest August on record. Summer 2019 broke temperature records without the presence of a strong El Nino event in the Pacific Ocean, usually a driving force behind a boost in thermometer readings. Paris, France set an all-time hottest temperature in July, while Anchorage, Alaska saw an unprecedented heat wave where temperatures hit 90 degrees for the first time in history. Across southern Wisconsin, some might argue that summer never fully arrived. We've been in certain ways fortunate here in the Midwest and in Wisconsin, south central Wisconsin, even Madison in particular, that it's been uh, you know, reasonably comfortable. Wisconsin assistant state climatologist Ed Hopkins says Madison typically averages about 15 90 degree days a year. We've had only six days of 90 degree heat this summer. Hopkins points to the position of the jet stream as why we've been cool for the summer. We've stayed on the cooler side. Uh, well, it's, it's been, it, it, you know, it's been warm at times, but we've been a lot cooler than if you go down into Illinois or, or out into the high plains. Now, the first day of fall is September 23rd, so it is still technically summer for about another week, and the season definitely holding on to southern Wisconsin. High temperatures will remain in the 80s with the humidity sticking around into this weekend. All right, meteorologist Dave Caulfield joining us. Dave, thank you. Thank you, Dave. State Senate Majority Leader Scott Fitzgerald is announcing a run for Congress. The Republican hopes to take over for longtime U.S. Representative Jim Sensenbrenner. He is the first Republican to enter the race alongside Democrat Tom Palsowitz, who lost to Sensenbrenner in 2018. Other Republicans are also eyeing the seat, including Senator Chris Kapenga, former Governor Scott Walker's son, Matt Walker, and Matt Newman, the son of former Representative Mark Newman. I've served Wisconsin during the golden age of conservative reforms. I have a proven leader who gets things done. And send me to Washington, and let's get to work. Fitzgerald has been in the state legislature since 1995 and has been the leader on and off since 2011. The legislators are introducing bills that would help family caregivers around the state of Wisconsin. According to AARP, about 600,000 Wisconsinites pro provide more than 500 million hours of unpaid care to their loved ones per year, each spending about $7,000 out of pocket. Senator Patrick Teston of Stevens Point and Representative Ken Skaronsky of Franklin are introducing two bills they say will help ease that burden. The Credit for Caring Act provides a tax credit to help out with expenses. The CARE Act, which we are introducing today, aims to ensure that hospitals provide instructions to care caregivers upon discharge of their loved ones. New survey from AARP Wisconsin shows support for the legislation. The Wisconsin Hospital Association opposes it, saying it will lead to unnecessary regulation for them without improving patient outcomes. The Dane County Humane Society is making it inexpensive to get a new furry friend. The shelter is offering reduced adoption fees today through Friday. Adult cats are $5 and kittens are $75. According to a Facebook post, DCHS has a lot of cats to choose from. 
<coughs> excuse me, you can check out all of the cats on our website. Channel3000.com. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Later tonight, the Madison City Council will vote on a resolution asking the Air Force and National Guard to reconsider placing the controversial F-35 jets in Madison. Well, the mayor of Madison also making her views known with a statement released today. Maddie O'Neill live ahead of the meeting with what this vote will mean for the future of the 115th Fighter Wing. Maddie? Hi, Eric and Susan. There's been a lot of talk about this here in Madison. Some neighbors are opposed to this, worried that the jets would bring significantly more noise, while others are in support of the change and the jobs it will bring. Now, tonight, the Madison Common Council will be weighing in on this as well. Madison is one of five finalists and two preferred locations for the F-35s, which would be stationed at Truex Field. A resolution introduced by Alders representing the area describes concerns from the Air Force's draft environmental impact statement, including that the F-35s would disproportionately affect vulnerable populations like minorities and those with low income. In a statement today, Mayor Satya Rhodes-Conway says it's difficult to evaluate the true impact of the project and the U.S. Air Force and National Guard must consider potential potential adverse effects, <clears throat> writing, quote, they should reevaluate the selection of Truex Field as a preferred location if the final environmental impact statement does not respond to these concerns and provide strategies to affirmatively mitigate the noise and other detrimental impacts of siting F-35s at Truex Field. Now, we've reached out to and haven't heard back from the Wisconsin National Guard today, but representatives told us last week that bringing the F-35s on base could be crucial to its future. There's opposition to this resolution as well, including from the group Badger Air Community Council, which is a nonprofit supporting the 115th Fighter Wing. We'll hear from that group's executive director tonight at 6. Now, if this resolution is passed, it will be submitted as official comments to the Air Force from the council. We'll have an update at 10 on how that vote goes. A Air lot at stake here. All right, Maddie O'Neill reporting live. Maddie, thank you. More to come on News Free Now at 5 up next. Heartland Farm Sanctuary helping its newest animal recover. We'll introduce you to Maxwell. And then coming up tonight at 6, the Friends of Pope Farm Conservancy say they will no longer maintain the property. What this means for the future of the Conservancy. Check of the day in Wall Street. The Dow up 34 points. The NASDAQ adds 32 and a half. And the S&P gains 8. We'll be right back.
Workers at Heartland Farm Sanctuary in Verona are used to helping animals that have been through some trauma, either from cruelty or neglect. Madeline O'Neill tells us the sanctuary's most recent story offers a lesson for humans. Very powerful, the stories of resilience. This is Olive. Made up of the forgotten. He was found in Milwaukee on the street somewhere. Unwanted. So their feet were in really bad shape. And misfits. Francis, you want to be in the picture? Heartland Farm Sanctuary is full of tales of hope. This is Rudy. She was attacked by a mink and lost one full eye and then was blinded in the other. Um, but she is such an example of the power to overcome adversity. Stories like that are how veterinary hospital worker Katie Hammer found the sanctuary all the way from Orland Park, Illinois. After taking a call last month, that was hard to hear. People had found the pig on the side, well, watched him bounce out of the truck down Interstate 80. The week's old pig hit the highway face first. He was treated and Hammer ended up giving him a name, Maxwell and a home for four days. Sweet little guy. And <laughs> anytime he'd see another animal here move or, or make a noise, he wanted to get near them. So I knew he was very, very stressed being alone. Hammer took the pig across state lines to Heartland, where he was scared, tired, and sick. It was so sad. He was shaking. We would wrap him up and just kind of hold him. So what a traumatic first couple of days. Maxwell was sent to UW's vet clinic. We were so relieved and so squealy happy to see him that Sunday when he got home. Maxwell is squealy happy too. Just seeing that pure joy. He is very confident and very, very intelligent. He's such a smart little guy. Especially considering if he had stayed on that truck, he would likely have been on the road to slaughter. What a horrible day for him, but he also it was he won the lottery right it that day changed the trajectory of his life instead this courageous piglet will grow up at the sanctuary loves <laughs> that camera where he can make friends and eventually grow to be even bigger than 600 pound Winnie here who has a similar story you want an apple cake? and I'm absolutely thrilled to see that he's in a sanctuary where he can be out in the sun and roll in the mud and, and have a wonderful life ahead here for the children who take empathy classes here are those who come to the farm as a form of therapy. Maxwell will also be an ambassador of resilience. On overcoming adversity and, and you know, even if you've experienced trauma, like real trauma from falling off of a transport truck on your head um, to learning how to trust and find joy in life again. In Verona. He's such a good role model. Look at you now. Madeline O'Neill, News 3 Now. There are angels among us, I'm telling you. Those interested in following Maxwell's story can check out the Heartland Farm Sanctuary's Facebook page or their website, and we have links on our website, channel3000.com, to both. Well, he's looking good, Maxwell. Yeah. All right, let's get a look at First Alert Weather now. TV meteorologist Gary Canalti joining us. Complete look at our forecast, Gary. Our weather's looking pretty good right now, too. Skies are partly sunny. Started out the day with some fog, and again, that lifted. Wasn't as widespread as the previous day because we had a little more cloud cover, and temperatures uh, stayed up just a little bit as a result. But again, most of Wisconsin free of precipitation. There were a couple of showers and thunderstorms up uh, in far northern Wisconsin. Those have moved into the arrowhead of Minnesota. So right now we're dry. But uh, the future traffic computer model uh, through Friday shows the potential for another half inch to locally an inch or more of showers and thunderstorms from tomorrow night into Thursday morning. And then we have more showers and thunderstorms in the forecast from Saturday into early Sunday. That could bring us an additional half inch uh, amount generally, but we could see some amounts in excess of one or two inches and in heavier thunderstorms there. So we have to keep an eye on that because we're just saturated right now. But the uh, WISC sky cam showing partly sunny skies, Edgewater sky cam showing sunlight glistening off the southern end of Lake Mendota. As we check out the almanac for today, our high temperature 79 degrees, the low 59, so uh, still above the averages of 71 and 50. And right now our temperature is 78 degrees, winds are out of the southeast at 11. The dew point temperature is actually a little higher than it was yesterday at 65, so the humidity levels are still staying fairly high. Uh, Hurricane Umberto right now, maximum sustained winds 105 miles per hour, but moving even farther away from the U.S. coast. The forecast from the National Hurricane Center strengthens it into a Category 3 hurricane as it passes just to the northwest of Bermuda, but then takes it out into the Atlantic Ocean and then eventually curves it off toward the east, keeping it away from Canada. But still a very powerful storm system and it heads across the North Atlantic by Sunday, uh, still near hurricane force winds up there. But uh, around 
around the upper Midwest right now. Temperatures are still pretty warm out to the west. Mid to upper 80s over western Iowa, low 80s in western Wisconsin, upper 70s here in cooler, of course, near Lake Michigan. Dew point temperatures are in the 70s through much of Minnesota and Iowa. So the humidity levels are unusually high for September, and that's because the jet stream winds are basically from southwest to northeast. So it's continuing to pull out moisture from the Gulf of Mexico and bringing it northward into the United, uh, the north central part of the United States. And this warm front out to the west of us has even warmer and more humid air behind it. On our side of the front, temperatures upper 70s to the lower 80s, but you get on the other side of the front, we're seeing upper 80s to the middle 90s again back into Kansas with dew point temperatures in the uh, seven, uh, upper 60s to around 70, mainly along the warm front. Actually, as you get into the warmer air, the dew point temperatures drop off a little bit. Otherwise, it'll just become blistering hot. So for tonight, look for partly cloudy skies, some patchy fog overnight, low temperature at 61. Tomorrow, another partly sunny, warm and humid day with a high temperature of 81 degrees. And future track, look for partly cloudy skies tonight against some fog, especially closer to Lake Michigan, low temperatures in the lower 60s, partly sunny skies during the day tomorrow with a high of 81. But tomorrow night, showers and thunderstorms move in from the north and west after midnight into uh, Thursday morning. Low temperatures mid 60s, those showers and storms move out on Thursday morning. We'll see some sunshine in the afternoon with high temperatures around 80. Again, rainfall amounts generally around a half inch, but we could see some amounts in excess of an inch or so and heavier showers and thunderstorms. Seven to 10 day forecast, we stay warm through Friday, just a slight chance of rain Friday. Showers and thunderstorms Saturday into Sunday morning lead to cooler weather with a drop in the humidity for next week. By the end of the week, high temperatures in the mid 60s. As we take a look at first alert traffic right now, there's the view on the Beltline at Park Street, not looking very good in the uh, eastbound direction. We're seeing delays right now from Monona Drive back to west of Verona Road. Uh, westbound, we're seeing delays from around Fish Hatchery Road to near John Nolan Drive. 45 minutes right now on the Beltline from uh, University Avenue to the interstate. There was an accident earlier around uh, uh, Stoughton Road. Uh, 19 minutes going back in the westbound direction. Heading out of Madison, 27 minutes to Janesville on I-3990 from the Beltline southward. 21 minutes to Sauk City on US-12 and 19 minutes out to Sun Prairie on East Washington Avenue and US-151. That's your news through now for slur traffic. All right, thank you, Gary. Still ahead, five U.S. officials have new evidence that Iran is behind the attack of Saudi Arabia oil facilities what the president is saying just ahead.
Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and Defense Secretary Mark Esper have publicly blamed Iran for a strike on Saudi oil facilities. But President Trump has stopped short of naming Iran as the culprit in the attack. According to a senior official, the U.S. has identified the locations in Iran where more than 20 drones and cruise missiles were launched. Secretary of State Pompeo will go to the Middle East to work with the Saudis and U.N. inspectors on what information about the attacks can be declassified. President Trump says he does not want to go to war with Iran, but he is keeping military options on the table. The United States is more prepared than any country in the history of, of in any history, if we have to go that way. Uh, as to whether or not we go that way, we'll see. For months, we have been telling the administration that their uh, campaign of blind escalation with Iran was going to get this country into a war, a war of choice, uh, and we are dangerously on the precipice of that conflict. Saudi officials briefed congressional leaders on Capitol Hill Monday. Speaker Nancy Pelosi wants the Trump administration to brief all House members. President Trump's former campaign manager testified in front of the House Judiciary Committee today. Former campaign manager Corey Lewandowski repeatedly refused to answer questions from Democrats while on the stand. Lawmakers pressed him about whether President Trump directed him to tell then Attorney General Jeff Sessions to limit the Mueller probe. Lewandowski claimed the White House told him to not disclose the details of discussions with the president. Recognize that the privilege is not mine, but I've been this asked by the White public, House to. Uh, Congressman, I'd be happy to answer your Actually, question, or you can just have a Trump conversation campaign. by yourself. This is a House judiciary, not a House party. This is the committee's first hearing investigating possible presidential obstruction of justice and abuse of power since its party line vote last week to formalize an impeachment inquiry. Republicans brought up a motion to call it off, but it was denied. Meanwhile, two former administration officials were blocked from testifying by the White House, citing separation of powers. And stay with us. We'll have a final check of your forecast in just a moment.
Tonight on the CBS Evening News, tens of thousands go without pay after a payroll company abruptly shuts down. What some businesses are doing now. That and more tonight on the CBS Evening News. It is warm and humid outside. Yeah, yeah you know, this is mid-September and we're still <laughs> seeing dew point temperatures in the middle 60s and temperatures upper 70s and lower 80s. But the good news, at least for now, is that there's no rain on the radar anywhere around us. But uh, that will change by tomorrow night and, when, and Thursday morning. We'll see some showers and thunderstorms. And we've had 5 to 10 inches or more of rain just in the last week and a half over southwestern Wisconsin. Temperatures right now range from around 70 near Lake Michigan to the lower 80s out toward the Mississippi River and upper 80s in western. Uh, Iowa and Minnesota. Those dew point temperatures are actually a little higher than they were yesterday, so we probably will see some areas of fog overnight. The winds might be enough to mix up the air and keep the fog from becoming too widespread. Otherwise, highs in the 80s through Friday. Best chances of thunderstorms tomorrow night into Thursday morning. Slight chance Friday. Another pretty good chance Saturday into early Sunday. And then a break in the heat and humidity for next week. All right, we're back in 30 minutes for News for Now at 6. Stay tuned for the CBS Evening News.